evening welcome welcome good evening all of you thank you so much for tuning in i rapidly in the diaspora this is caroline ajuna kibuka ateni the host of this amazing show mwebale muno nyuena aba tuning in nkabulikiro nkubungambe minyo caroline ajuna kibuka ateni omzirakati owahoima host wa show eno uh, just a little reminder, uh, this show is in two, two languages, that is English and Runyoro. Runyoro is the language that is spoken by the people from Runyoro. And Runyoro is found in the western part of Uganda. We are back yet with another amazing topic. Uh, but before I welcome tonight's uh, guest, let me play as my people team to play us an amazing song uh, which is Likwija by Robert by Robert uh, Prince of Igima Band. Nitugenda kuwa nitwa tedera kazina karunge kakwija aka igema igema Band by Robert Prince. Uh, her new man, you won't in Jacuba, Nineta, guest white, or I get her online. A very home gambo buke, or work of a gambera ho. But before I invite our guest, let us listen to this amazing song. And all copyrights reserved to him because this is not our song here. I rapidly am here in the diaspora. The song is for by, is or is done by Prince Robert.
Abanyoro na abanyoro kati na ba friends ba abunyoro ebirungi vikuija indeed ebirungi vikuija muterali kilida muno abanyoro na abanyoro kati and friends of abunyoro this is Iraka ya abunyoro in the diaspora muwebale muno akazina kongira kabanyumire umojo Mr. Prince waitu o abunyoro gima band akazinire ebirungi vikuija and we need to be very positive to looking looking forward to the nice things that are coming ahead of us ito abanyoro na abanyoro kati na ba friends baitu uh, hati nkakazina kongkwabuka genzere indeed tuinahanu guest waitu tonight agenda kutule televirungi vionka evirungi vikuija kandi ninyenda kumutangira baitu ninyenda kubajuki ya mukake i just want to remind our viewers and listeners that uh, today's topic is uh, leadership traits and concepts and we have already had a little bit discussion about these leadership traits and today our guest is back uh, who is going to talk more about it and i want to inv invite him online and ask him to introduce himself to our viewers uh thank you so much for accepting to come back yet on the voice of bunyoro in the diaspora Hairaka ni abunyoro mdiaspora kuhija kubwa unga mbubuko uko kwe yongi na kutugambi na ho about this topic, the leadership traits and concepts. Okabao hanu a few weeks ago, you introduced this topic to us. Kyo nkote kawa genzile kubaza more about it in Kusaba. I would like you to introduce yourself to our viewers for those of, those, uh, of them who have just joined us today. May get to know you better. Uh, so if you could introduce yourself, that would be amazing. Otyo muno abuoli, webali muno kuikiriza, kuija kubaha na itwe today, kankuleke obe hobunga ambobuke, obo kubaza haba viewers vaitu. Okay, um, mabara gange ni inyowe um, uh, Patrick Dedo uh, Vienkia uh, Kwesiga, abuoli, uh, abuoli uh, eva mpako, uh, from uh, Bunyoro. Um, enzarwa ya masindi hali hamtano kwa kinogozi na karujubu mukarujubu sub county in um, uh, Bururi county masindi uh, district uh, na boye kio ndi hano uh, kuetera nza memienda ya kitara kubaza omlingo o utukusobora uh, kuhereza abantu yutuli nka ava 
abakubakurira omu miringo eno neri omu jungo eweta lida abat lida aba muhereza nawe kyo ninyowe ogu ebisigaire bindi njya kuba nimbi bagambira introduction ak karungi muno kandi nihira ba viewers baito baba listeners baito bakahulire kurungi Hati nko bunga ambide, uh, today is our leadership uh, uh, traits that you're going to tell us. There are about a hundred of them that you've written and you promised to come and discuss more about them. Last week you gave us three, I remember. And I just want you to remind our viewers, for those who were not here last week, to know the first uh, the, the leadership traits from number one to three and then from there you start with number four. Otemuno award. Okay. Um... <clears throat> So, nja deni kusaba, nko kwa kira kusaba, nti programe no ndengeo muno kugibaza omurimi orungereza rondo rujungu wabukuwa uh, tuina abantu wa ingi abatamanyire uh, orinyoro um, from my perspective, abakuendeze uh, kuhura eventu vino some of them, uh, nkora nabo wa colleagues, some of them, mba mentaringa, Na wana wange kuhonka, njiyo um, respect nkono njia nikira haikuru, uh, orinyo wa sorokuwa wata kuru etegeleza uh, kurongi, njina students, wa mpagira wa support inga in universities. Na wwe kyo mba ile ninenga ukusaba, mbaze murujungu nye qualify ingile, nti orinyo wa nduma njile kurongi mnoti, nkaruwe waga, uh, of course, um, nuruo ruankulize, nuruo mpikia bone and bread in uh, masindi uh, nyoro. So, yeah, I have requested now to speak in English so that my colleagues, my uh, mentees, uh, my children, and uh, whoever is following and may not know uh, nyoro, uh, to be able to understand uh, what I'm talking about. That is the uh, leadership uh, traits, uh, concepts, and uh, how you attribute them or you apply them in your leadership. So, yeah, as um, uh, the host Caroline has asked me to do, uh, last time we talked about uh, just a tip of the uh, leadership tips, uh, there were three. One of them was, uh, and was the first, and it's the first tip in my leadership tips is, uh, if as a leader, you sit and get contented thinking that everything is right in your establishment, then you are no good leader because uh, there will always be opportunities for development. There will always be new things that we need to look at. And I remember quoting our Runyoro saying, Nti eriso liomukuru lidora ahaira guire. So everyone else will be seeing uh, all uh, the, the, the bloom, the good things, the exciting things, but a wise person's eye will only look, I mean, will look also at something that needs correction. Uh, and then we also looked at uh, the importance of structures and we related this to God. When God was creating um, uh, human beings, um, he made sure that we've got all the structures, faculties around us working, and they should be working. We've got the brains, the head, we've got the hands, the legs, we've got uh, the main body, got the skeleton inside, we've got the organs inside body organs, we've got the legs that carry us. Now all these things combine uh, to make us work, to make us tick. So it is with the leadership. There are so many structures, uh, I mean, there are structures that uh, will require us to have in place uh, so that we work according to, to the law, we call those legal structures, we work professionally, we call those professional structures, uh, we work according to ethics, we call those ethical structures uh, for those that are in ethical services like health now. These things, if you don't have them in your establishment, if you don't have them in your organization, actually, you are not complete. You are not a uh, wall. So it is very important that we have uh, structures uh, in, in place. And of course, we talked about knowledge. We'll talk more about knowledge. 
we have to know as leaders we have to be in the know we have to aspire to know we have to learn more because we have to be the fountain of knowledge and the fountain of honor you cannot be honored if you don't have the right kind of knowledge the right kind of uh, etiquette ethics uh, how you do things that is going to inspire people and say wow that is my role model wow i want to behave like uh, my leader wow we are privileged and uh, and happy to have this kind of leader so those were the three um uh, leadership concepts that we looked at the other time we can you can continue to the fourth one so that oh. i think people have now reconnected and i'm sure they will be able to follow you accordingly super and of course now to know as i said we're bringing these leadership tips in the context of our leadership and in the context of remember uh, the, the the starting point was social entrepreneurship or social enterprise now these are establishments that uh, we have in place or we have to initiate to develop communities now because and society because we go to develop uh, communities and society it doesn't just happen from nowhere you will have a social enterprise if you don't know how to run it you don't have the right attitude aptitude concepts uh, structures traits of how to run a social enterprise or an organization or a charity it will go to note so another disclaimer now here now all these leadership tips i'm talking about they come from my experience they come from my understanding i have practiced them i have uh, been privileged to uh, to know and be near people that have practiced uh, such a leadership tips but of course i'm aware that people can have uh, their own way of working and if it works uh, so let it be in social psychology in social science in social research we learn that human behavior may not necessarily be uniform in other words what worked for uh, mr kosiga may not necessarily be uh, what works for um mrs kibuka ajuna but one thing stands that in whatever works there has to be a level of reliability and validity in other words if you moved it and gave it to someone else to use it will yield uh, the same results or those good results and these leadership tips as i said i've uh, experienced them i've used them across so many establishments and they have yielded results and therefore uh it is my own understanding now let's go quickly to uh the next leadership tip and also to say i've been jumping from tip to tip so it is not in order of one two three four because i know we may not finish all of them but at least they are those that i feel uh my uh, listeners should be able uh, uh to grasp so here is leadership tip number 15. Now I've jumped to number 15. Now, to whom that much is given, much is expected. Of course, that is a biblical uh, writing, but so it is in leadership. It, as leaders, there is much that is given to us, uh, entrusted unto us, and therefore there is much that is expected from us, which is not this. Because as a leader, you're not going to say, oh, well, I've done mine, I've done my bit, I've done what I can do. No, you've been given much, you've got to do more. People have got so, yes, this person has gone an extra to do what is expected. And as leaders, we are entrusted with a lot of faith in us, a lot of respect, and a lot of expectation. But this comes with a lot of test on our part how we dispense all this that has been um, entrusted on us a lot of understanding is expected from us a lot of fairness is expected from us keeping confidentiality of things said uh, even in good friendship times is expected of us that you still uh, you don't have to spill any of the things that have been said to you even 
when people have criticized you, when you've been in public leadership and you say, uh, maybe I've been voted out, now I'm gonna spill all uh, the, 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 the secrets of the establishment. Now, leaders don't do that. You've got an expectation, uh, which is uh, a code of practice, a code of secrecy at times is called. Uh, and therefore you don't give these things away to enemies. We are expected to control our emotions is very important. Actually, uh, this week we had an issue in some of the forums where I belong and uh, people became emotional. Now, as a leader, you don't become emotional. You have got to weigh how much you put out. You've got to, because two mistakes, uh, for example, you say, no, I'm behaving like this because some other person or my subject has behaved uh, in, a, in a bad way, uh, by mistake, done mistakes. As a leader, you've got to find a way of how you come to educate someone. So there is uh, an expectation that we control our emotions and controlling emotions in uh, psychological terms is known as emotional intelligence. So there is a lot of expectation to have emotional intelligence, to keep calm in the middle of storms, uh, not storm out even when you've been stormed. Mr. Dead, I just, just sorry, I just want to, to be clear with, with our viewers. They want to know, I, I myself would want to know, trait number 15 so that i can note it down just in a summary so that people know that this is number 15 this is number 16 because i kind of see a lot of traits so far you've discussed but i need to know which one is which if it's okay with you Good. number 15 which is to whom that much is given much is expected so as the leaders there is a lot that is entrusted on us and therefore there is a lot of expectation uh, from us and all these things i've talked about the emotional intelligence uh the the, the, the fairness um the confidentiality or privacy or uh, uh secrets that have been entrusted unto you in your times of leadership not spill them out even when you've been criticized by the very person that gave you uh, these secrets is uh, that what I'm talking about. Because much has been given unto you and therefore much is expected uh, from you. So. No, that's fine. And now it's a bit more clear. Thank you. So yeah, let's continue. In all, what I'm saying, the eyes are on leaders to carry the burden, the burden of the lead. So, as leaders, all eyes are on us, and we're carrying what we may call a professional burden. Yeah, it is not uh, a load that is well, it can be breaking you, but because you've been entrusted, there is trust in you, and therefore you have to be able to do this. So, leaders uh, who burden uh, their families or a family or employees or the population. Um, and of course, they are not themselves who are feeling or dispensing this sense of burden put on them uh, to do what is right. Uh, instead, they're turning it around and think uh, the population owes them, the family owes them, the employees owe them these are not leaders because you have to give back a lot a lot more it's not just sitting there and feeling comfortable in that sweet chair and now so that was leadership trait number 15. now i will go to leadership trait number four and uh, as i said uh, sorry i'm jumping here and there in the traits because uh, there are some that i feel uh, you should not me. So, the extra in you or the extra in a leader. Now, here I'm saying, in order to reach and know what requires improvement in an organization or in an establishment, you need to see far and faster than anyone else 
that is missing in the organization. So whatever is missing in the organization or going wrong, as a leader, you have to be the very first uh, to see it. Yeah. Of course, at some point we'll talk about the intelligence, but for now, the leader, you've got to carry the mantle of having an extra sight. You have to be at the right place in the right time, or even faster than any other stakeholder uh, in the kind of industry you're in. I term this as the extra or the third eye. We've got two eyes, but a leader should have the third eye. It is your third eye that will see something that is about to go wrong before anyone else sees it. The third ear, you've got to know, you've got to listen and be fast in order to proactively um, nip in the bud something that would destroy your establishment. You must have the third leg. In other words, be fast and people will start wondering, oh, how did this person reach here? So it's the third leg to be very, very fast. And at times I call this intelligence. So you must have the intelligence that will give you all these things to hear, to be there, to see and act very, very fast. All in all, be the first to notice as a leader. So that is tip number four the extra in a leader. I will now drive into tip number five. And the question is, fighting battles, remember as leaders, we fight so, so, so many battles. Or for that matter, we are faced with so, so many battles. Yes, leaders or leadership involves fighting battles. Battles of indiscipline, rebellious people, uh, discrimination, people who take you for granted, those who undermine you, friends turned enemies. You should be prudent to pick battles as they come and position yourself well to win. You rather over prepare than be caught off guard, but also be ready to lose graciously because there are certain battles you may not fight. You may want to fight everything and you destroy or you waste your energy. That would be fighting bigger battles. So there are certain things that you should not be involved in as a leader. So it is very important that we know which battles to fight, which battles to ignore. And of course, there will be which battles to lose and lose graciously. So that is tip number five. It is very important. Tip number six, there is what I call triple S. And this is uh, one of my most, most important aspects of a leader personally as a person triple s i learned this when i was still a student and uh, it was at Makerere university and i was a resident of uh, a hall of residence called north court Paul. it used to call itself a state so it is a north Court state not north court hall and in it we had the triple s and triple s stands for speed, superiority, and surprise. I carried this into my life and it has yielded quite a lot of results for me. So speed, superiority, and surprise. These three form the strategy of a winning army. Remember I've said North Court used to call itself actually a military state. So uh, these three form the strategy of a winning army. So it is for a winning leader or organization, be there first, that is speed. Be the best and deliver quality work, that is superiority, and catch your competitors off guard in style and class by doing the unexpected brilliancy that other people may not easily do, and they will stand 
and wonder in EU. There is a small organization doing this. This organization just started yesterday doing this. This organization led by such and such a people with all the stereotypes in the world doing this. That is triple S. And I can see this in all the organizations I've been in. I see this in um, in our rooms because people wonder. Go ahead. Yes. What Mr. Dedo, thank you so much for that. As uh, at, uh, at I think we've lost the sound. But to go for a break. And so we are going to, re to go for a break right now. And we will be back after the break. We are going to play for our viewers an amazing song called Summer Summer by Figo West and this is he has the copyright and please enjoy the song and we'll be back with the next uh, leadership trait as Mr. Dedo will be explaining to us Peace and fire Money boy music Sounds of Figo West Master skills Bokei de geki are no nei moka amai sonya ganaba ya teza majo nya saba o moka manda kiare no kuki kuasa on pere se kio kuya amiri mo yengora e e bali ne sati ya bijuara o nei ba ya nora nei ba mama nei ba ya
Ah, koniko akazina kafigo west samwa samwa nkrora nywe naba viewers by tu hanu kasima kazina karungi muno and uh, before we proceed with the uh, traits uh, that mr kwesiga is trying to teach us uh, i would <coughs> want to appreciate all our viewers who are listening uh, or watching us tonight uh monyikirize mbeha mabara makagen kubazaho abundanta kubalizeho please omanye i appreciate you and thank you so much for being and always following us on our facebook uh, uh, page and on our youtube channel uh daisy biaruhanga moti thank you so much for coming in and for tuning tuning in today and you're saying tip number five where which battle is worth fighting or losing gracefully egonio tip amoti ya msemeize and we will continue working on that trait as well as lead as us as leaders christine majara majara sorry this is our one of our executive members on BKDA. She's also saying uh, good words of wisdom of Woli Bakusima. We bale mno kusomesa abanyoro, abanyoro katina, our friends of Bunyoro. These amazing traits that we, most of us would not have known hadn't you been here to talk to us today. Uh, Samuel Kakembo at Kitone Arari, thank you so much. Uh, you're thanking Diana Kemremba. I don't know what she has said, but Diana Kemremba, you are with us as well today. Thank you for tuning in. And she, Diana is saying constantly evaluating program is very helpful. Uh, I think that is a trait. I don't know what she's trying to talk about some of us. I don't know, but I think you will talk about that as well. Uh, Daisy Biaruhanga still is saying Abol Dedo is really hitting the nail. Apparently you're really hitting the nail. You're telling us the real traits that we need to have as leaders. Solomon Asimwe, uh, Kusima, my favorite song by, Sam, uh, by Figo West, I think, Samwa Samwa. Dokas Karunga, Aboli, Mama, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. And others watching with you, I don't know who are watching with you, but thank you so much for tuning in. Christine Majara is still also saying, Akazina Karungi, Muno Mwebale Kusimo, Zina. Uh, Judith Bigira is watching, Amoti Mwebale Kuija Halaini, Mwebale Kutusapotinga. And so many others who are coming in. People are still uh, tuning in. I think they've uh, had, uh, went for a cup of tea before they came online. But we are really appreciating you all who are coming in. Uh, without wasting time, uh, Wally, Kikuisana Bantu Tibaina, so many questions for you. But uh, please, you can continue with the talk and tell us more about the traits that you prepared for us tonight. Yeah, um, if I remember well, I think it is um, um, Diana or Kemirembe, but Kemirembe, I remember that name quite well. Um, tip your evaluation, Elio, as, uh, as one of the so many tips, because you got to constantly evaluate at uh, at formative, uh, deductive, as you get along, and summative. But can they make Kugiso Sonkora Egyo Ekuija at some point? Uh, probably not today. Obaliva uh, Vanya said again, uh, because it is a very, very important uh, thing. And of course, I left it to be one of the very last because uh, evaluation comes uh, somewhere when you've seen things. Now, I will go to tip number seven now. So tip number seven is, uh, is, is a question, and then that question is going to be answered. So it's saying, as leaders, the qualities or attributes we have, they are either made or born. Made refers to land, of course. Born refers to natural or inherent in you. People will follow, respect, and want to be led by people with certain characteristics. An able leader is the one you will hate to love. Now, this is, a, 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 another, that this is built in a trait, a trait within a trait. So you will love to hate your leader as opposed Loving to love your leader. Loving to love your leader means they do all the good things that you like. You want to see on the plate. 
yeah but leaders that you hate to love uh, leaders that at times may make decisions that not necessarily um, you don't like necessarily but at the end of the day they either save you or save society save the establishment uh save the community and then you turn around and say okay I really uh, respect and love that, yeah? So good leaders are leaders you will hate to love. In other words, you will just have to love them because they are doing what is, uh, what is good. So uh, that is um, what we want of a not people that don't do things for the sake of pleasing you, say that they be loved, in other words, love to love. Such leadership attributes include, now these are the things that the leaders you hate to love uh, will have. They will have grace on them. And grace is mainly natural. Remember I've said some are inherent, some are learned. So your grace, either given to you by God, those who believe, given to you by nature, and built as a form of culture in you. You even don't know where you got that grace from, but you have it around you. Wherever you go, you are always the person uh, looked at because you've got grace on you. Knowledge or uh, knowledge of various life and professional outlook. So you've got knowledge of a lot of things that uh, make society, that make the organization. So you must have um, that knowledge, be knowledgeable, educative and educated enough. So the leader has to be educated and can educate. And education is not necessarily learned uh, in class, uh, academic but to have uh, a structure, a way of doing things that um, kind of uh, fits in the jigsaw of life. So you've got education, you are educated, uh, not necessarily uh, academic or land, God, you've had these, so many classes. People can go up to say uh, P7 or year six or, uh, or GCSE, um, a secondary school, but they are able leaders. They are educated enough to lead leaders. And people may have degrees, may even be pro, uh, professors, but they cannot run an establishment. They fail nations. So education is very important. And of course, there has to be, uh, and this is another attribute, leaders have to be smart in body and in mind. Uh, I know people will say it is the content in uh, someone's mind that matter, but people also want to identify with smart people, uh, well-dressed, uh, representing, representative. At some point, we we'll look at the trait of diplomatic, and smartness is one of the diplomatic traits, but uh, that's for another day when we come to it and good leaders should be able to own up own mistakes some leaders when they make mistakes they either keep quiet or they pass it on because they've got the power and no one is gonna blame them uh, when people blame them uh, they dismiss them they discipline them they imprison them that is not a successful leader you have to own up and accept feedback so that you can improve yourself, improve your society, your community. And remember, as leaders, and that's another trait we will see somewhere, we are role models. If you really know who doesn't own up, even your children will never own up to their mistakes. They will start passing blames and defending mistakes. So, own up. And of course, uh, uh, taking- Mr. Uh, Mr. Dedo. Yes. Mr. Dedo, I'm interested in, in the question that you, you you said it's going to be like a question. Are leaders born or um, are leaders made? Because that is something that many people keep asking themselves. Even myself, I've never known the answer. Are leaders made or are leaders born? I'm saying it is both. Because there are certain things you learn over time. 
uh, you see, the knowledge you, you learn, the education you learn, uh, ability to own up uh, to mistakes is something you've got to accept, so you learn. And, and I've talked about grace. Grace around you is inherent. Uh, you see when they say charismatic, uh, it is in you, it is given to you. Some people are anointed. Uh, for those that are religious or spiritual, they say that's an anointed uh, of God. So the anointing never goes away. So that is inherent, that is natural. But most aspects of leadership are learned. And as we hear, all these traits we are talking about, most of them you will know are learned. And there is another uh, attribute we will um, pick on it at some point is in order to. What about when someone says, I have heard many people say that that is that leader was born. He was born a leader. And you try to say born a leader. So you ask yourself and everyone is sure that that person was born a leader. What would you say to those kind of people saying there is a born leader? They don't want to know whether he was he has been made, but he's born, and they are convinced that that was a born, born a, that person was born a leader. What would you say to those people? Yeah, but they sort of say that uh, um, there's what we call inherent characteristics uh, that are natural. Say, for example, um, a, a leader who, who who smiles, and uh, they've got that. You see, there, there are some people who, even when they are not smiling, I'm giving an example. Uh, you'll see them smiling. That is something natural. Uh, he's on them. You're not gonna take and, and and people would like to go to someone who, who has got a smiling posture. Yeah, uh, you, you cannot take it away from them. Uh, so that is uh, inherent. Uh, there, there are people that uh, make decisions, and some of these decisions, for even they themselves, they don't know how they have come to that uh, decision. Uh, again. Uh, it is inherent uh, or natural or born for that matter. For example, we read, uh, for those of you that are religious, we read in, uh, uh, in the Bible about, about Solomon. Solomon had inherent wisdom, well, anointed, because uh, God uh, anointed him with wisdom. So it, it can be born or natural, inherent. To be born uh, is being inherent or being natural. Uh, they are all interchangeable. Uh, he made a decision that, oh, cut this child because two, uh, two women are uh, claiming mothers and they want to take the child. Say, so cut the child. Now, the owner, the real owner of the child said, ah, rather than cutting uh, my child, rather the other person. So that is inherent. That is born, uh, in, in born, or that is natural, or that is a special anointing these things do happen but but even when you are born uh, a leader or when you are anointed there are certain things you've got to do and these are learned you will see or here again i'll take you to the bible very sorry for those that don't necessarily believe uh in the bible or in, in the faith that i'm bringing about uh there was king david king david was anointed yeah but he made a lot of mistakes so he did not learn yeah, even when they are born leaders, inherent, anointed uh, by God, natural, uh, you still have got to learn. Now, these things that I'm talking about here are the things we learn to do as leaders. As I said, uh, I think when you asked, uh, one of the attributes is, as a leader, we have to undergo what is known as a personal change, because you will have a way of looking at things as a person, as Mr. Kwesiga, born in Kinogozi, how I was brought up, what I believe in. But then you meet um, someone born in Kisaragua, yeah, uh, Kisaragua Hoima, and uh, has a different kind of beliefs, and you're their leader. You're not going to impart only your style. You have to have personal change. And this personal change uh, are the traits we're talking about in order for you to fit in the people you are leading and understand them. And in one of my traits, uh, there is what I say, in order to be a leader of ducks, you've got to squawk like cucks. In order to be a leader 
of um, of cards. You've got to uh, to meow uh, like cards in order to be a leader of cows. You've got to mow like cows, so that when you call them, they will hear your voice. Say, "This is one of us." So you you were not born all of those things. You've got to learn to be all of those things in order to lead and uh, and what? be understood. Yeah. That we could call that trait number what, so that we we know that we are done with that. So that you to be a leader, you could you have to mow like a cow or like mew like a cat. What trait number is that? Like a duck, so that ducks can understand. You fly like a bird, so that the birds will say, "Oh, this is one of us." <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it is. It is in it. I can't remember. It is uh, leadership tip number one, but it is there. Uh, in order to lead uh, a people, be like them. When you're working with children, um, you, you you may not have had an experience, and if you've had, don't say. Uh, because here I'm generalizing. I work with children. When I am with children, uh, you may think I'm a child myself. I relate with them. They understand me. They actually they run to me uh, even more than they would run uh, to their parents, and they tell me uh, their concerns, and we talk through them because they are got to be like a child. So that that trait is there. Be like the people you are leading. Okay, so um, we will go to the next tip. And this is tip number eight. It is legacy. I'm sure uh, my host, this is one of your best. You always talk about legacy. So any leader, who leaves the stage without a legacy is no leader. Leaders build long standing legacies. A legacy is a profound element, whether it is physical, structural, or an investment, including investment in people and infrastructure like real estate. Bring people on board and develop their capacity to be future leaders, so that when you leave, they are leaders. Build institutional structures that will make your organization or country the best. Strong leaders do not look at here and now only, or consume what is available now without building for a stronger future. Leaders who eat and run their organizations or countries down are nothing but misleaders. So we're getting a concept here. So those would be misleaders. Even in a home, a good family head prepares his or her children for a better future through nurturing, establishing a foundation for development and the continuity of a successful family culture. As a leader, ask yourself if your organization will still be standing or even stronger in years to come or when you are long gone or for generations and generations to come. In order to answer yes, the right, strong and formidable structures, the people you've built, the institutions, the, the legacy, Stands Dedo, out. Mr. Dedo, this legacy uh, trait is very important. As you said, I love it a lot. But this is what most of our leaders are failing to do in Ibunyoro. So I want us to take time. It's in, that is lacking in our, in our country, especially where we come from in Ibunyoro. How do you then tell, how can someone tell, how can you teach or lead our leaders to do, to leave legacy when they leave power? Well, uh, as I said, uh, in order for someone to be uh, a leader, successful leader, uh, they've got to undergo a personal change. And the personal change is what they think in. And of course, uh, in this trait, there is a question. Uh, you've got to ask yourself, 
will my institution still stand when I am gone, when I am away, when I'm not on the stage? That's question number one. You can be strong, but if you are the only strong person, your organization will not stand, again, there is a problem there. Or you can be the type that has run uh, down the organization, you are um, you are only surviving or um, thinking everything ends with you. Uh, what are times they call in my in, uh, in, in, in my language? So call it working for only today. So ask yourself how about tomorrow? Ask yourself how about your children? Uh, how will they be the, your generations to come? How will they stand? How will they survive? If you cannot answer this question, unfortunately, as I said, you are a misleader. You're not a leader. We just have got to answer this question. And this is the question that has to be splashed on all of our leaders, starting with myself. Will your organization still stand when you're gone? Will your organization stand in five years' time? Will your children and children's children uh, reap on what you have done if the answer is no you've got to do it and of course that will mean a combination of so many things that we'll hear in these trips in order for you to build a legacy we're talking of structures you cannot have a legacy without structures because um you you'll have organization your country will have nothing to stand on without infrastructure without the structure uh, that make establishment. Some, some of our leaders don't seem to be asking themselves these questions. So, as I said, we're about to end this talk. What would you say to these leaders who are not asking themselves these questions? Will, the, will my company, will this company continue if I, if I leave? Will my home continue if I am not there? Will my children survive when I'm not alive? For those who are not asking questions, those leaders who are not asking questions, what do you have to say to them tonight? Because this is something that we need and that's what all of us are talking about every single day with about our leaders. They are not asking themselves these questions. Two quick answers. The first one, as I said, then they are misleaders. That, unfortunately, they are not leaders. But uh, the, the, the next answer lies in tip number nine. So I'll quickly um, uh, scan through tip number nine as time is against us, which is visionary. Now, a leader has to be visionary. A visionary leader has to, uh, is the one with uh, building and developmental ideas. So that's what they're lacking, that's what they're missing. So they ask themselves another question, am I a visionary leader? So have I got building ideas or destroying misideas. If you're destroying, those are misideas. If you're building, those are ideas. So this includes both working in and on the organization. Working in the organization is to improve the internal aspects of the organization. Working on the organization is to have relevant stakeholders, relevant networks that will help you build the type of organization that you want. Informal, I mean, internal visions relate to how you lead or initiate ideas for internal processes that will form various growth themes internally. Working on the organization, as I said, relates to how a leader influences external and strategic stimulation that will attract external interests in building the organization. Such an external stimulation include how you communicate externally, how you pitch your organization, the type of external stakeholders that you have. Are they the ones that are building you or are they the ones that are sucking you, sucking your organization? External interest is generated by how much vision and ideas that people see in you. You see, birds of the same feather flock together. If you are a visionary person, you will attract visionary people that will build your establishment. If people, I mean, if you're the type of person who sucks your organization, 
you'll get people who will give you deals that are going to kill your organization because they know your weakness. Uh, you'll get people that um, were asking for bribes or giving bribes. You'll get people that are coming to your organization and actually have got nothing to offer, no intellectualism, no professionalism. They're just coming because it is you who doesn't know what you want for your organization. So visionary people will attract visionary stakeholders in order to build legacy for your organization. Mr. Dedo, thank you so much. I just want you to say just uh, your last remarks in five seconds because we are la running out of time. And I'm very uh, happy that you've been able to tell us those few traits you've talked about today. Just give us your closing remarks. Uh, and one of my traits that we'll hear, I'm closing with this, is uh, as leaders, we have to be learning every day. Every day is a school day. And therefore, you're not going to stop to learn. You will learn from all the good things implement. You will learn from the bad things and learn, not castigate, not imprison. Uh, well, uh, with due respect to countries, uh, of course, uh, there the, the are laws that prison, but what I mean is uh, learn, support, educate, and uh, be a deductive person who is able to coach, to mentor, and build a robust organization and be the type of leader that people will want to associate with, and you build your organization to the best that it can be. Thank you so much, Mr. Dedo. We are very, uh, very, very, very happy for you to have, and, and, and we appreciate your time. You're welcome them but as you we keep saying we'll keep coming back you keep coming back and telling us a few of them and until you write or fit complete your book which we hope we'll be putting we will be able to sell i don't know they're going to give it to us to sell it on your behalf in the diaspora website it is all up to you but thank you so much for your time and thank you for doing this amazing research we are very privileged to be hosting you here on The Voice of Bunyoro, and we look forward to hosting you again next time. It's my uh, experience. It's my yeah. experience. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, There's no research is... here. There's no research. <laughs> <laughs> experience okay sorry uh, i i beg your pardon mr dedo thank you so much for giving us your experience uh you're kind of telling us your story because these are the traits that you are doing in your daily leadership uh, um, style thank you so much for tuning in in the diaspora i am so happy uh, that you have been able to follow us today and we are going to be leaving the air, leaving the air right now with this amazing song that I will be telling you before I do my closing remarks. We have to keep learning. A good leader, you must continue learning and looking for new ways of how to develop yourself self de development is important as a leader mwebale munok to holidays will be back next week same time 6 30 with yet another amazing guest please continue following us on our facebook uh, page our youtube channel and instagram please like our our videos so that we can be able to continue sub surprising you and working hard if you don't like our videos we will not know that you you want you like our work so please continue liking our videos subscribe on our youtube channel and we'll be back next week 6 30 same time mwebale munok tuninga ini mukama abalinde abahe weekend nungi ahead of us and we hope to be back same time 6 30 akazina katugenda kubale kera komkuru david uh, David King or Egema Band, Eya Winyoro, one of the best bands we have in Winyoro. And it's going to be a very amazing song. Please do not leave until the song is done. Mwebale Muno, we'll see you again. Haira uh, Kariya Winyoro, it's Carolina Juna Kibuka Atenyi, the host of this amazing show. We'll see you then. Bye.
Sikara, no go semen in a quam, who can drum the moon. The Kaka in my cover, the water, going in on again, that is a book of a book of his Sikara, no go semen in a quam, who can the moon. No more living on in Tabitan, Sikara, a book of a package in Yamu, Yamu, and no go sing and over one another sing. I grew the country, come every room. Hey, can't take on me. I'll keep on 